Hi, my name is Bob. Some of you may know me as the Antenna Crafter. And today I'm going to take a few minutes to uh, demo how to put together the uh, 6 meter magnetic loop, the 6M-F, as sold through the VHF loop website. When you receive the antenna, you'll get the main element, which is CNC cut, laser cut out of uh, 125th thou aluminum sheet. And you'll get a sealed bag, which contains uh, the hardware that you need to complete the installation. All right, I'll move the camera around and over my shoulder and we'll get started. Okay, before we get started with the assembly, we're gonna need a few uh, basic tools. Number one, a Phillips head screwdriver, number two or so, a couple of pliers, and ideally a 5 8 and 9 60 inch open end wrenches. Adjustable wrenches will work fine if you have to, pliers as well. Um, one other thing you'll need, something to form the uh, feeder loop uh, on. Um, I'm using an aerosol can of spray here, which is about the right diameter, but a cup, a glass, a tube, or something that will help you form a nice round circle. First thing you wanna do is that when we cut these, they're CNC laser cut, and an artifact of the laser is that it will leave a little bit of a rough edge on one side. Uh, some people call it dross or slag or you know, many different terms. Um, so you're gonna wanna be careful and maybe take a little bit of sandpaper or file or if you have a burning tool and hit the, the outside, the one side, the outside and the inside corners uh, just to clean it up a little bit. Once you've got that done, turn your attention to the uh, bag of uh, parts that it comes with. Um, what you'll have, I'll take them out one by one and show you what I do. <clears throat> this here is thinner gauge aluminum. It's what we make the uh, feeder loop, loop out of. The first thing that I like to do is to twist the ends by 90 degrees. And essentially, um, take the pair of pliers, two pairs of pliers, uh, with one side just at the, approximately where the circle would end, and the other one about an inch away from that and give it a twist of 90 degrees slowly and gently. You don't want to rip the aluminum. It will rip if you're not careful, but you're gonna to want to have something like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Again, about an inch away and a little bit of a 90 degree twist, okay? Doesn't have to be that accurate, just something like that. Then what you can do is you take your form, in this case I'm just using an aerosol can, just using it to kind of run, make a nice round uh, circle out of the uh, straight piece of aluminum, and then it'll be you know, something to that effect. We'll straighten it up once we mount it onto the antenna. Once we empty the bag of the other components, you'll notice that you'll have two capacitor plates they're identical plates. Both of them um, have countersunk areas in the center where the screw will sit in that holds it to the main element. And both will have a larger opening um, on one side and then a smaller opening on the other side. The smaller opening, if you look closely, will have threads. You have your base mounting plate, again, with countersunk uh, spaces for the screws, the bolts to go in and then also a quarter 20 thread in the center so you want to put this on a camera standard camera tripod. In addition, you'll have your SO239 um, four stainless steel Phillips head screws with square nuts and two Teflon tuning screws. So what I'll do first, this can be a little tricky. I've done it many times, but uh, it still can be a little tricky. You might need a, a, a third hand. But what I'll do first is I will put the base plate on the uh, antenna. I'll take the nuts off the uh, screws and then I will press fit the bottom of the antenna into the mount like such. Sometimes it's tight fit, sometimes it's not so tight. Um, once you have that in position like that, take one of your square screw uh, nuts and you'll see there's a square area that this fits into. 
can be a little tricky getting it in there, but once you get it in there, just try to hold it in place with one or two fingers. Take the screw up through the bottom, and then you can then tighten it by hand, or possibly the screwdriver. the same thing as two screwdrivers or two screws rather another one goes into this area here the other side put that screw through once you have them both relatively uh, like snugged up you can Give them a good turn and tighten it down so that it doesn't move on you. Okay. Next, we're going to basically do the same thing with the capacitor plates. Again, notice the countersinking on one side of the capacitor plates. They're going to want to face each other. In addition, the two big holes and two small holes, you want to have them flipped around. So one big hole on one side and one small hole on the other side. So you want it threaded on one side. Um, on the far side and threaded on the near side um, on the other side of the loop. So essentially again, we take our screw and nut, put that in there like that, take the nut, drop it through. And again, the screw on this side Not difficult, it takes just a little bit of coordination. It's not, not, not hard to do. Two hands, two sets of hands would be easier. Tighten that down. Now, I noticed that the threaded um, opening on this one is up there, so I want the non-threaded here. And again, with the countersink facing that plate. Put this in there like that. Take the screw and the nut. Drop the nut through like such. Then you're gonna have to bring this up, you know, not too far, but you can bring it up far enough that it's not gonna deform it, but it'll just, it'll be springy. And then with the screwdriver, get in there like this. And tighten it down. You want a really good connection on the capacitor to the loop. A good electrical connection, so tighten that down. And then tighten that one down. Next, and this is probably the most critical part, is the feeder loop. With your connector, un undo the uh, nut and take the two washers, and you'll notice there is a, uh, a plastic spacer um, that's really crucial, as well as there should be some, doesn't have to be, but on, on most of the antennas, I will put a uh, piece of heat shrink on here, just added insurance, because what we don't want is the feeder loop to short directly to this um, for the first, uh, when we first put it on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the feeder loop, or the uh, connector through the main loop uh, mounting hole, then the feeder loop on top of that, the big hole of the feeder loop goes on top of that. Now. You take this white spacer and you want to get it all centered, you'll feel it snap into place because the idea then is that you want this first part of the loop that you put on to be floating and not electrically touching uh, the center of the connector here. But it's going to be all shorted and connected to the main loop and, and to the braid or the uh, ground of the uh, connector. Next, you put on the flat washer followed by the other side of the feeder loop, which now is going to be shorted to the uh, center stud. Follow that with the uh, other washer, then you can tighten this down, keeping everything centered. You wanna be careful that this is not shorted out on the first connection, only the second connection. So if you were to check it out it, with a ohm meter, you would see it would be a dead short, and that's the way it's supposed to be. It just, you don't want it a dead short until this second part is connected. Now you can take, your uh, wrenches 
and tighten this down. You know, tighten this down fairly snug. You're gonna wanna, um, you don't want it coming loose on you. So, you know, pretty snug, but you wanna then maybe do it such that it's still loose enough that you can get in there and you can, you can shape this a little bit better. I made that a little too tight for shaping. If you loosen up just a little, little bit there, you'll see that I'll be able to uh, pull it out a little bit like that. And you can hold your fingers in there and, and you can continue to tighten it up. Um, but eventually, uh, you're gonna wanna get it as tight as you can. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, but you just don't want it moving around. So that's kind of how it's gonna look like that. Lastly, take the uh, PTFE or Teflon screws, feed the screw through the bigger opening, and then you can start threading it into the other side by hand. I guess when you get the flat blade screwdriver, it's, uh, it'll be a little bit easier as well. And then this side is gonna go in the opposite way so that the part you're threading in is on the other side. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna thread these so that there's basically no tension one way or another. It's just, just there. It's not compressing the plates yet at all. And then this one here is a little tight. Okay, so the idea now is to adjust the SWR, or at least the center frequency, is manipulated by the distance that these plates are apart. The closer you get them together, the lower in frequency the antenna will tune. Where it's naturally resting here will likely put it above the six meter band. Um, so you're gonna have to adjust them slowly. I mean, we're talking a quarter, maybe an eighth of a turn each time until you get it to where you want it. Um, and that's basically how you tune it. If you have an analyzer, it's a lot easier, um, but it's not impossible uh, to do without one. So if you have any questions, I'm always available. Email, phone calls, uh, let me know I can help. Any suggestions, um, those are always welcome. Thank you.